Welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 311. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Twilight Genesis. G'day, Norman. Hello, mate. How are you doing? I'm pretty good, pretty good. It's been a while. Like, how have you been? I mean, alright. Yeah, it has been quite a while since last time I was on. Yeah. Uh, season 8 started, which is fantastic. I had a birthday party and the premiere on the same night. <laughs> So I got another cake. Yay! I remember inviting you on, then says, "Oh man, I can't. I have a lot of stuff to do. I got real. I got. I, I got a life outside of this show, man. Like a life." <laughs> yeah. The, the 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 problem with a lot of things here is that a lot of uh, social gatherings and meetups and stuff tend to happen on the same night that you record for the MBS show, and since I'm like one of the figures in the local community for the bronies it's it's kind of expected for me to go yeah it's kind of my fault i I shouldn't really record on a saturday but you know what okay Uh, honest but you know what honest question here if we don't record on a saturday what day is a good day it's hard to tell really because to get a week's worth of news you'd have to record friday saturday or sunday Mm-hmm. Friday and Saturday are definitely days where people tend to do more stuff. And on Sunday, you got Monday to consider. Plus, uh, every couple of Sundays, you do yeah, other MBS show recording, if I'm not mistaken. True, true. The review and discussion podcast. So, I'm not really sure. I guess we'll just have to keep trying my luck to see when I'm free to join or not. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, that's true. Plan in advance. That's true, that's true. No, I'm just curious because the fact of the matter is that, okay, um, why couldn't we do it on a regular day? Like, um, for example, Wednesday. And then I just remembered that if I were to do it on a Wednesday, uh, if I were to invite someone from the States or further west from where we are, they won't be on the same time zone and they are probably going to be at work and whatnot. So, yeah, that just hit me. Yep. Yeah, and re-record earlier in the day on Saturdays, it'll be the middle of the night for them. Yeah, true, true. Uh, You know what, it's one of those situations where it's working, we shouldn't fix it, right? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. If it's not broken, don't fix it. You're talking about things that are broken, right? (laughs) Let's head into the news. (laughs) Uh, so, anywho, well, remember way back when when we were talking about the DVD for Australia, and I mean the My Little Pony movie DVD? Remember that? Yes, I remember that. That was only a couple of months ago, so it wasn't too far off. <laughs> and yeah, it, it's what it was. <laughs> the typo there is they misspelled little <laughs> with a single T. How could you know? Like. <laughs> I'm still disappointed in whoever produced those covers to have made that mistake. Okay, uh, probably it's one of the situations where the squiggly red line under the text is not highlighted because maybe they turned it off or it's not visible in Photoshop. But, eh, wow. They they corrected their mistake, so yay. Now, little is spelled with two T's now. Yay. Yeah. I'm going to make sure when I eventually get the DVD, I'm going to get one of the fixed ones. No, nah, man, like for me... It should be too long before they're all replaced. Yeah. Like for me, I, I want to get the error one. Like that, that is much fun. Like you have it and then like, hey, look, why do we this... That's not a word. Up. Oh, sweet what? Sorry. <laughs> if if I find one with the typo, I'll buy it and send it to you, Norm. Oh, man, thanks, man. <laughs> uh, but still... <clears throat> Uh, that's besides the point. And yay, um, they fixed it. And whoever who is lucky enough to buy the typo version, hey, at least you get something to remember the DVD by. <laughs> but anywho, uh, talking about the movie, um, last week I reported that a little girl by the name of Juliana was really hyped about the movie or just going to watch the movie and whatnot she she was sitting in the back of the car and she was very animated about her hypeness and um it seems that not only eqd noticed it it seems that 
Hasbro and Lionsgate noticed it too. And being the bros that they are, they sent a care package for Juliana. And my goodness, <laughs> uh, just looking at the video was just, oh my goodness, so cute. I have nothing to add to this because I had no idea this was ever a thing. I don't recall hearing about this, the original video. So, but it's pretty cool that uh, Hasbro turned around and went, all right, we have to get this girl more ponies. Yep. I, I know a lot of people probably be very jealous of her. Mm-hmm. And here, here's the thing too. Uh, she got a letter by Princess Twilight Sparkle and you can see her face light up. Like, oh my goodness. <laughs> she is just so excited. Uh, I can't add anything more. It's so... What you call this? Pure. It's so gooey and stuff. I, I got I got no word for it. Probably there is. I'm, I'm not good at it. Uh, but still, it's a follow up. You guys should go and check it out because it's funsies. So yeah, on to the next news. Um, remember way back when when we got early screenings of season seven by Canada? Yes, I remember that. Them good Canadians showing us the pony episodes early. Thank God for them. And you know what? It's happening again. Was it Treehouse that did it last time? Yes. I can't remember. Because uh, I just remember watching all of the episodes as they aired from the Canadian time. And I'm probably going to keep on top of them again. But uh, it really messes with... No spoiler rules in in <laughs> Discord servers and on Facebook groups. Okay, okay, okay. That 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 is interesting. Like, could you explain it to me? Because okay, um, how do I put this? Could you just could you just explain it to me? Because I know the rule is no spoilers until the episode comes out officially. But when this comes into play, how does it go? Uh, I guess it's probably uh, differs between whoever is running the the rules of the groups and whatnot. But when this happened with season seven, what I had to turn around and do was because I know some people were refusing to watch the episodes until the US airing. I had to implement a rule in the WA Bernie's Reborn group that I run that the spoiler warning was extended for any episodes aired early until. 24 hours past the American air date. So if you watched the Canadian episodes as they re- uh, released early, you couldn't talk about them in the group for like an extra week or longer. Oh. Because the, the standard rule that we have, which is one, a co- one co-opted from a, an older forum that we had, was that the there's no spoilers allowed to be discussed for up to 24 hours after an episode airs. Mm-hmm. And since the rule when episodes are released early is you have to wait until the that 24 hours after the American air date, all the early air episodes from Canada had a huge no spoilers stamp thrown straight on them. <laughs> oh, it just reminded me of, you remember the one where Sakura was going to be a tree? Remember that episode? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, remember there's the early Russian release? <laughs> Oh, yeah, I remember that. Or, or the one that you guys had early, uh, Pony Show in Australia first. Remember that one? Oh, yeah, yeah. We had two or three episodes early here. Yeah, two, two episodes, I think. But how do you deal with that one? Like, oh, it's in our home turf. Do we talk about it or not? Uh, well, they, they came out uh, as a result, uh, just as the mid-season hiatus started, I believe. Mm-hmm, true. So I just sort of went, okay, these episodes... Uh, I, I think I put it to a vote and just went, all right, who's actually going to watch these episodes early because, you know, we've got another month or two before <laughs> the show resumes and they're already out and I'm assuming most people are going to watch it. You know, should we just go the, you know, we maybe a week and then we can talk about the episodes? It was a mess to try and figure out. <laughs> I can't even remember what we ended up doing. I think we just sort of went with, you know, they've aired in Australia, like, you've got a week to watch it, and after that, the no spoilers rule is going to be lifted from those episodes. Luckily, almost nobody actually discusses the episodes on the uh, the groups that I run. 
So that's a good bonus so there. I don't actually usually have to worry about people <laughs> spoiling through the group. If anyone spoils to each other privately, I don't care. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Understandable. It, that's their problem, not mine. <laughs> true, 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 true. But yeah, this still reminds me of how Season 8 was spoiled. Uh, okay, I mentioned this before and I'll mention it again. Season 8 holds the record for getting spoiled. Because you remember way back when, when we had Season 2 and there was a iTunes leak. Oh no, episode aired early on iTunes. La gasp. And then, oh no, so on and so on has released early. Then we got season sevens, um, scheduling for pa, and now season eight is going to repeat the cycle again. But remember way back when, when uh, episodes were leaked before season eight was even confirmed. Yeah, I think season eight was already confirmed by that point. But yeah, I remember when uh, I think it was like five or six episodes were leaked. I watched three episodes from that leak just because if anyone, if you can get your hands on them. And even if you wait until after the episode officially airs, watch those leaks at some point because they have none of the background music. So whenever someone isn't talking, it's dead silence. And it really makes all the generic one-off sound effects stand out. (laughs) And it's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. And it, it shows you, or it shows at least how things are done in the business. Like why background music is important, why special effects is important, and so on. And yeah, um, also there's the thing called placeholders. Those are there for recognition that something will be inserted there later on. <laughs> because I remember one episode that I watched had a soundtrack by a artist. I got no idea the name. And in my brain, I says like, wait, that's not right. <laughs> what? And there's also one episode of the Equestria Girls where they were using the Yoshi's Island soundtrack. It's like, wait, that's not right? <laughs> yeah, things like that are always weird. Uh, fun trivia, the original soundtrack for the TV show Daria, mm-hmm. when it aired originally on TV, it used a lot of licensed music, so it had actual band music and all that. All of that had to be replaced when they made the DVDs. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, it's like JoJo in America. <laughs> oh, yeah. So many licensed songs in JoJo had to get replaced in English versions. Yep. Uh, but still, back on point, uh, if you guys do not want to get spoiled, you know what, I'm I'm going to defer to what Twice said because I can dig it. Like, be mindful of others who do not want to watch their episodes early because they want to be, they want to support their network and so be it. Um, for me and Twy here, we don't have those networks because our local cable station don't want to pick it up. Jerks. So yeah. But anywho, um, moving on to the last news. Have you ever wondered about the changelings? The new changeling, that is. Actually, not really. N- not not a lot. Well, I, uh... well, someone did. Well, someone was interested in the idea because... A guy posted on the Twitters, uh, pinging uh, Big Jim, asking, I'm going to summarize here. He noticed that some of the changelings uh, during the battle with the Maul Wolf, um, some of them were flying, some of them were on the ground. And he asked, do some of the new changelings don't fly or something like that? Or was it some kind of restriction to animation and whatnot? And Big Jim mentioned that, some don't fly now, they've changed. So, meaning that after the changing transformation, some of them can't fly. Okay. Yeah, I said in the article they made an addendum, it's that a bunch of them uh, choose not to fly now that they've changed. There's no confirmation that they can't. Ah. But yeah, the guy, the guy who asked Big Jim, he pointed out that it was mainly... Blue changelings with oddly shaped carapace uh, are the ones that seem to not uh, fly around. It was kind of interesting to, to read that and see that the, he had noticed a specific type or specific appearance of changeling maintaining themselves on the ground. Mm, all right, all right. Uh, I, it seems that I did not need this to end them. Well, silly me. But yes, that is something interesting to 
well, to be highlighted there because evolution makes you not fly? Wait, what? I, I could say on the spot theory. When they changed forms, because they were all uniform before, they were all the same, mm -hmm. but uh, becoming the new form has allowed them to differentiate from each other. So now that they can actually look different to each other, some of them may have a more grounded uh, body structure, he just being heavier, sturdier legs. They can fly, but they choose not to because their body is more suited to being on the ground than flying. Hmm. How about that? On the spot theory. I can dig it. I can dig it. It's similar to the dung beetle. It can fly if it wants to, but it stays low on the ground because reasons. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can dig it. Good theory, my friend. You you come up with it pretty good. Like, for me, I, I, I got no idea. <laughs> I spent a lot of time, like, invested in Pokemon and Digimon throughout my life. When it comes to things changing form and their their body changing to adapt to a new certain way of living or dealing with things. I, I click into that really quickly now. Ah, that's good. But anywho, that's the news for this week. And let's head into my favorite topic. And that is what have we been doing with our week? So Twy, since you haven't been on for a while, why don't you share uh, with everyone what have you been doing? This will come as no surprise, but I've been playing a lot of video games uh, this week and every week beforehand. Yay. What have you been playing, man? Well, most recently, I've been playing uh, Hearts of Iron 4, uh, especially with the Equestria at War mod, and a little bit of Red Alert 3. Hmm. Uh, not too long ago, I was investing quite a lot of time in PUBG, uh, where if anyone's following my my YouTube channel, they'll have noticed I've started uploading PUBG videos. PUBG? Yeah, PUBG. With the PUBG Gs. With my, my friends, uh, we call our group the Bumble Kings. <laughs> the Bumble Kings. <laughs> yeah, I'm the worst of them. I, I, I am terrible at that game. Oh, wow. So, how are you enjoying the PUBGs? From what I heard, it's pretty popular. It's not bad. It's still a buggy, un unoptimized mess. But Playing with squads, uh, it that that's great. That's always fun, especially when things go uh, haywire. Like when, when when stuff just hits the fan out of nowhere and everyone panics. That's great. The same thing happens in Hearts of Iron Four. Uh, something happens that we weren't prepared for, and suddenly uh, we've got a war front on three sides, and you know, world war sparked halfway across the planet. And, and everything's just gone to heck and back. Uh, that sounds like a great old time. Oh, it's it's fun. It is absolutely hilarious when you see two random countries turn around and go, we're just communists now, <laughs> and we're having a civil war with like such and such person and ourselves, and it's you just watch as everything devolves in one corner of the planet. Oh, that, that sounds interesting. <laughs> so... That, you've been uploading that too on your YouTube? Uh, no, I've only started recently playing it. I'm not sure if I'll actually record and upload it. Uh, I haven't actually uploaded anything about two weeks because I've been lazy. <laughs> I have 13 hours of PUBG to troll through and find actually amusing parts and actiony bits to cut into videos. So I, I've got a lot of content already recorded to uh, patch together. Well, uh, at least you've got something to work with. Yay. Yeah. Hopefully I can get some more variety in my content soon, though, because I don't have a lot of things to talk about like, about the games themselves, so I can't be one of them YouTubers. I have to get all the interesting bits of playing with friends where everything sort of goes awry, <laughs> and everyone just sort of has an amusing panic. There'll be something. Uh, i got a question for you. Have you heard about Fortnite? I play Fortnite. Ah, before the patch or after the patch? Uh, I play Fortnite. Uh, you mean the recent patch where they pulled out the guided missiles and then everyone got really angry so they DDoSed the servers? Oh, no, no. What I mean is, like, from what I can understand, is like Fortnite was a game before it became a Battle Royale thing. So I was wondering... Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, the Battle Royale was is an additional mode, so the original game is still there, and I prefer to play that. Uh, because if I'm going to do the Battle Royale stuff, I just jump into PUBG instead. Mm, okay. Because uh, I'm more used to it at this point. But, but yeah, no, I've, I've played both versions of uh, Fortnite. Uh, they they actually have cross compatibility between platforms now. Oh really? No. So you can actually play Fortnite from uh, from my PC with my friends who have it on Xbox and PS4. Oh. Even ones who have it on mobile. The only platforms that you can't cross play Fortnite with is the Xbox and the PlayStation. Oh yeah. They can both play with a PC person or a mobile person, but they can't play with each other. So wait, if you have a PC person and a PlayStation person, can the PC person hook up with the Xbox person? I'm not actually sure. I'm assuming I'm going to assume that it will probably throw a fit. <laughs> probably. But myself uh, and a friend who has it on, I think he has it on his Xbox. We were playing it together uh, just the other night. Oh. So could you? Well, I should have been reading show notes. <laughs> I ain't gonna blame you, man. But could you explain to me about this game, like the Battle Royale thing? Like, why is it so appealing and well popular? I'm not sure if I have enough insight to really say why it's so popular. I mean, I know why I like it. I like to shoot people, and I like uh, having a bit of customization. And, and a bit of, oh, I found the thing. This thing is nice. I run around this until I find something better. I think it's like a whole mess of little things people enjoy uh, sort of add up to one generally enjoyable experience. And it's different to what's out there for a lot of people. Hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. It's just that I just find it strange. Like suddenly Battle Royale games are the in thing now. And everybody's, you know doing it like the up and coming uh, which i'm called this um cowboy game what was it called again dead mm, not that right um what was it again red dead redemption yes red dead that has a better that has a better royal mode in it so like everybody's jumping on the better royal yeah it, it's a fad thing it the same thing happened with mobas and uh, like league of legends got super popular so everyone was like oh we'll do our own so now we got Dota 2, and we got Heroes of the Storm, and then there was a whole mess of games that were being made and then got scrapped, uh, even though some of them were actually pretty good. Like, uh, Dawngate got scrapped, but that was actually quite interesting. The Dead Island Epidemic got scrapped, uh, but that game was kind of a mess. And Strife came out, but was promptly abandoned by its developers after its release. Wow, that Betty. Yeah. I need to highlight something. Dota 2, um, Heroes of the Storm, and LOL, or League of Legends, uh, they came first before Mobile Legends. So I just need to point that out first because... Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. It, it, it's just uh, League yeah. came out and then that style of game got uh, popularized by League and then everyone started making their own games. That's the, if it wasn't for League, we wouldn't have had Dota 2 or Heroes of the Storm. Dota, Dota was out first before League. Like I think Dota was an inspiration for... Uh, Do Dota was the... Because originally it was Aeon of Strife, which was a custom map for StarCraft. And then they made a version of it in Warcraft 3, mm -hmm. which was Dota. And then from there... League of Legends came out as a full proper, we made this a whole game as opposed to just a mod on a map in a different game. And then Dota 2 came out much later on. I, I thought Dota uh, 2 and was... made by a different company. Uh, sorry, I, I thought Dota 2 came out before uh, League. No, no, Do Dota, Dota 2 came out several years later. Really? No, okay, I, I need to check this one yeah. out. Uh, because... Yeah, because like okay, uh, July 9, two thousand and oh 13. wow, uh, okay. League of Legends came out October twenty seven, uh, two thousand nine. If I'm not yeah, mistaken, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, huh? Okay. Because mm. the only other game like it that came out the same time around the same time League of Legends did was uh, what was the title? I I should know this title because I have it on my. Demigod, that's it. Demigod was oh, yeah. the only other game like League of Legends when League of Legends came out. But if I'm not which it released the same year. 
but it was completely overshadowed. If I'm not mistaken, Demigod was, instead of a top-down view, you can be a, in the third-person view, and it plays like a, almost like a action. Uh, the, ca- the camera had a lot more flexibility, yeah. You could zoom in and out a lot more, and you could twist the camera. So you still were mostly isometric, but you could actually turn it around so you can face the camera a different way. Mm. Uh, because they had they had the a much more intricate maps, and they had more maps. They had like 10 or 15 maps. Uh, they had like, e- each map could play on one of five game modes. They only had 10 playable characters, but it was quite a good, quite a good game in my opinion, but it was completely overshadowed. Mm, all right, all right. It's just that, well, uh, I thought Dota 2 came out before uh, League of Legends, and League of Legends was the quote-unquote clone for Dota 2. But, yeah, it seems that I'm wrong. All right, all right. And on top of that, uh, Warframe, like, it's good now, right? Like, from what I heard, it's getting really, really good. It's been good for a long time. It's just, it's getting better and people are starting to take uh, more notice of it, uh, especially with the, since they added the Plains of Idol on giant open area map, and they're going to make a, them add, adding a second one of those, hopefully by the end of this year. Mm, from, that's what I heard, uh, like... That and with the, the, the slow decline of Destiny, I think Destiny coming out and people trying to convert pair Destiny to Warframe, and Warframe being the obviously better game has helped Warframe. True, and Warframe is free. So the idea is, hmm, I pay $60 and it's not fun, or it's fun for a bit. And I pay for free and I can have a lot of fun. Of course, there's in-game purchases, like, that's obvious. But still, um, from what I heard, like, it is a fun game. Oh, it's great. Uh, it can get a bit tedious to play if you do it solo, but if you play with a group, it is, it is fantastic. It's a lot of fun. So, how long have you been playing? Uh, since the start of twenty thirteen. So basically, since it first came out, then. Yeah. So just just shy of five years or so. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Uh, shows me what I know. I, I I played it for a bit just because I like the characters. Hmm. All right. I have almost three Warframe in the game, so I've spent a lot of time farming in that game, but also not enough time farming because I'm lazy. <laughs> uh, it's all good. It's all good. But anywho, as for me, uh, well, uh, besides the Overwatch, nothing much really. I mean, haven't really been doing anything besides a watch and day jobs um hmm yeah n- nothing much man like i've still been playing overwatch like recently in overwatch there's the archive event that's going on and they tell the story of the black watch uh, a group of covert op units that runs things that the overwatch doesn't really want to know like very covert stuff and that storyline is fun. And yeah, I've been playing it a lot. Like, a lot. I have been tempted to reinstall uh, just so I can play through that. Oh man, you should. It's really fun. Like, if you do install it, I'll play it with you, man. And we'll go at it slowly so you can get a general idea and stuff. And um, the characters that, uh, well, besides the all hero mode, um, in the default mode, you play as Reaper, McCree, Genji, and Moira, one of the newer characters. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. I, they introduce a lot of um, special enemies. Like there's an assassin who is almost like the witch. There is the heavy arms unit who is almost like the tank. Wow, the more I'm saying this, the more it sounds like uh, Left or Dead. <laughs> And you know what? It feels like Left 4 Dead. It's fun. I, I wish they put that mode in the game more. Uh, but still, uh, that mode is only till um, the end of April. So I do highly recommend just reinstalling the game just to try it out. You know, just to try it out and be done with it if you don't like it. Yeah, I, I may have a look at throwing that on uh, over the weekend. You let me know, man. Over tomorrow, maybe. If you go, if you're planning on playing it, do let me know so we can play together. 
I will definitely let you know. That reminds me, I recently reinstalled Borderlands 1, Ooh. the original. It gave me a bit of runaround to get it to work, but I, I've been playing that also this week. So, how's... Okay, when you say run around, does that mean uh, it's not working for Steam or do you have a physical copy of it? I have a physical copy of the Game of, game of the Year edition, but because the servers that it uses to register its license when you try to install from the disk, those don't exist anymore as far as I can tell. So I had to look up to figure out how to get it onto Steam. Turns out Steam has a tool that you can use to... Uh, for it to go, okay, you have a disc, so here's a digital copy of the game. But then, apparently, the Steam download has this weird issue where sometimes it messes up, especially if you've done it through, uh, you gained it through the tool like I did. It messes up the um, the binary files, mm-hmm. and it's missing a file. So I had to go in, rename an existing binary file to the missing file name, verify the uh, the game files to get it to download the file that I originally renamed, and then I could play it. And even then, I read that some people were having even more issues beyond that. Wow. Oh, okay. Um, okay, that sounds complicated, but you got it running, right? Yeah, I've got it running now, yeah. How is it, man? Are you enjoying it? Oh, it's great. I, I love the original Borderlands game. Uh... I mean, of course, Borderlands 2 did improve on a bunch of things like accuracy, graphics, and whatnot. But there are so many little little things from the original Borderlands game that I just I have missed, like an actual, real, proper assault rifle. One where you 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 hold down the trigger and it just keeps going. But Borderlands, they loot grind. You, it's almost Diablo esque. Go in, grind for yeah, loot, get yeah. more loot. Yeah, it has that sort of thing where you go in and you just play to get loot, but it has an interesting story to play through as well. Never did really finish Borderlands 1. I did finish Borderlands 2, though. It was fun. I installed it after finishing it. Like, I should be finishing Alien Noir. <sighs> Still, much fun to be had. It's a lot of fun. It's really, It really is worth it playing if you can get your hands on it and play for it again i think if you don't have a physical copy and and buy it on steam like regular regularly and what i think it's under 10 bucks now was it um should be right i have no idea let me google search i think it's like it, it depends on your region like for us it's for me it's definitely going to be more than 10 bucks no matter what i mean it's an old game like so it should be um, lower like okay uh, it's $20 American on Steam so hey it's not it's like closer to 28 for me yeah so it's not that bad it's um, affordable I'll say that for a what was was this a triple A game was it yeah yeah triple A game yeah and it came out what 2009 so yeah triple A game costing about $20 I say it's worth it so, yeah, if you do have the Steam and you do want to go back to Nostalgia, you should give it a shot. It's fun. Uh, so, anywho, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at mbsshow. And for me, you can reach me at Norman Sanzo. So, Twy, where can the good people find you, man? Okay, well, since last time where all I had was my deviant art because everything else got closed down mm-hmm. stuff has been re- reopened and has been reused so now i can be found on youtube and twitter under the midnight point and i can be found on deviant art and film fiction as always under twilight genesis all right all right i'll add that into the show notes also it can be found on twitch under eps 13 wait what eps EPS 1-3. Oh, that's an interesting name. Why, why not go for the Midnight Scribe or oh, sorry, the Midnight Pioneer one? It, it's an older account. It is a really old account. I, I've had this account since 2012 at the most recent. So yeah, my, my Twitch account is a really old one from when I used a different uh, alias. Ah, all right. So just, okay, okay. So when do you stream, man? 
I I don't have any set stream times. Like at the moment, I, I don't think I've streamed in a couple of weeks, uh, just because it's mm. kind of hard to figure out when is a good time to stream from Australia. I can understand that, man. Like I'm just thinking about streaming, and then like, should I stream at well around this time? And then thinking about the time where if I were to stream now, wouldn't this be like 9 a.m. Eastern? Like, hmm. <laughs> Like, hmm, are people going to watch me at 9 a.m. Eastern? <laughs> yeah. Time zones. I don't know. Ain't they great? Fantastic. Or at least sometimes they are. Yep. But still, <clears throat> um, people should just follow you because if you do stream, they'll get a notification. So, yay, that's good. It would be good to get more people following uh, me on Twitch. It might give me a bit more motivation to actually sit down and stream uh, as often as I keep saying I'm gonna. Yeah, give him the motivation, folks. Do it! But anyway, um, also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on polyvlive.com. Links are in the show notes. And also please do subscribe to the NBS Show Review and Discussion Podcast. Available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there, you'll catch me, Silver Quill, Sephir Heart Song, and probably Guess of the Week, reviewing the Pony episodes, comics, and also movies. Sometimes we like to do other shows. One of the shows that we always talk about, it seems, is the Miracle Stady Bug. I don't know why, but it seems fun. And I like seeing Silver and Sephir crack at the mere mention of how tight cat noir's outfit is so yeah and also movies twi where you were last on what were you reviewing with us um the, i think the only things i've been on for an actual review uh was one comic a, and then i forget which episode it was an early first half episode of season seven it was either the episode before or after the Rainbow Dash episode with with her parents. Oh yeah, I remember that one. Okay, okay. I forget the nut title, but we I was either on the, the reviewing the episode before or after that. Uh, all right. Still, um, it's it's there. No, I'm thinking about a movie. Like, did you review Kung Pao with us? Yes, I reviewed Kung uh, Pao with yeah, you. I remember that one. Uh still cracks me up, man. <laughs> you may call me <laughs> Betty. <laughs> My nipples look like milk duds. <laughs> I thought I had. Yes, I, I, I do recall uh, you almost laughing to death while me and Silva quoted the movie incessantly. <laughs> I, I thought that. I, I thought it only happened when Silva did it. It seems that if anyone does, it seems that if anyone goes to the movie, I go going to. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> Weakness has been found. Indeed. I will try not to abuse it. <laughs> uh, if you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com. Oh, boys. With every support you... Uh, with every support you'll get a weird... <laughs> We have every support you get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Uh, and well, um, before I talk about the thank yous, um, there's an exclusive that came out this week. It's a recording of the things that we say before we record. It's very entertaining and very funny. I highly recommend people go check it out. Wait, no, um, you have to be a supporter. So the lowest tier is $8. So yeah, I highly recommend people go supporting the show because it's fun we we do crazy things over there did you get a chance to listen to uh that short toy no no i did not know that short existed oh yeah i forgot oh man uh hmm. yeah I, I haven't supported anyone on patreon for ages i even removed my own patreon account because i just couldn't use it at the time I couldn't support anyone, and I couldn't justify asking for people's support. Well, now, now I feel like a jerk. Hmm. Uh, but still, um, if you're a Patreon supporter, you can catch it over there. But anywho, I'm talking about the thank yous. I'd like to thank Lurker Cat, 
Starstream, Master of the Bag, Amy, Mark, Charles, Lucky Knight, and also Tristan. Thank you, my friends. You have been really, really awesome to me. So, anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I've been Twilight Genesis. And we'll guys catch you next week with another episode of the Astro. See ya. Cheers.